All right, everybody, welcome back to the second episode of Learn Solidity in 2024. It's your coach, Mark, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM for short. And the EVM is kind of like the CPU or brain that sits at the center of the Ethereum blockchain. And part of what's driving the value of Ethereum is the fact that it's allowing us to create all sorts of what some people like to call open finance interactions, or what I like to call DeFi money Legos, that is making the world of finance transparent. And that is opening the world of finance to the whole world in a permissionless way. And the main use case of Ethereum is deploying these indestructible censorship resistant computer programs that can be programmed with very powerful built-in economic functions. But to know how to do this requires a certain bit of skill because there's a lot to know when you start writing contracts in Solidity. And that's why a lot of the jobs in Ethereum development pay so handsomely. It's because you have to know a lot. Now you could start out learning the Solidity programming language that allows you to write smart contracts by going to the Solidity Docs main website, but this is not something that I really recommend for new Ethereum developers because it kind of just sort of throws you into the deep end. You definitely need a coach and a guide to spell out the foundational pieces of mastering this topic first. And then of course, once you understand the foundations of Ethereum, then the next step for you is to actually read and comprehend excellent source code. And I recommend that everybody read the source code for Uniswap, specifically Uniswap version two, because it's the easiest version of Uniswap to understand. And then of course, when you are ready, you can take things to the next level and actually write your own minimally viable decentralized exchange. And then after you do that, you really, really are going to be able to grok smart contract development using the Solidity programming language. But in this lesson, I'm going to focus on the fact that while Ethereum is a lot of different things, it's a blockchain, it's a transactional database system, it's a state machine, it's a lot of different things, but from the perspective of a Solidity developer, it's really just a virtual OS that you're programming for. And it's a virtual operating system that makes use of a virtual ledger that's decentralized and distributed and that no single entity owns and controls. And I think this is one of the most exciting aspects of blockchain development. Now, inside of this virtual OS, there is a computer or a CPU that is called the EVM. And the EVM is a computation engine similar to the Java virtual machine, if you're familiar with Java. And the EVM is also a runtime environment for executing smart contracts. And it holds all of the state or the data that exists in Ethereum. And it also holds all of the accounts that exist in Ethereum as well, which I'm gonna get into. But first thing you have to realize is that everything that exists on Ethereum is bytecode. So when you write these censorship resistant computer programs called smart contracts, they get compiled into bytecode via the Sol C compiler, which is the Solidity compiler. And the bytecode gets divided into the creation and runtime bytecode. And another thing that the Sol C compiler generates is something called the ABI, which is necessary for the outside world to communicate with contracts, which exist in the form of hexadecimal bytecode. So everything on Ethereum is done in bytecode. All communication on Ethereum is done in bytecode. And furthermore, after your contract gets compiled into bytecode, the Ethereum virtual machine actually deconstructs it into something called opcodes, which are instructions that the EVM actually understands. And each instruction or opcode has an associated cost in gas. Gas is another fundamental part of knowing how to develop for Ethereum. 
and it's what keeps Ethereum secure. So you definitely have to know how to work with gas. But at the end of the day, your contract gets deployed everywhere on the Ethereum blockchain on all these disparate independent nodes that can host them. And you access it via an address. And the only thing that can trigger something or a function in a smart contract is a transaction. So transactions are cryptographically signed instructions that basically allow you as the owner of an externally owned account to tell a smart contract to do something with something of value that you have, whether it be a token, whether it be money, whether it be data. So transactions are a very important part of understanding how to develop in solidity, and so is gas, and we're gonna get into that. And then of course, the other foundational piece is knowing how to work with the ABI, because the ABI is necessary for you to talk to contracts that exist in bytecode inside of Ethereum. So there is quite a bit to know, but in this mini series, we're gonna cover the foundational pieces so we clear up any kind of confusion for you. But first things first, I wanna take a look at a computer science explanation of the Ethereum protocol. And if you head on over to the Ethereum beige paper, which is a, a more easily understandable version of the Ethereum yellow paper, it says that the Ethereum protocol is a deterministic but practically unbounded state machine with two basic functions. The first being a globally accessible singleton state and the second being a virtual machine that applies changes to that state. Now, what does that mean? The Ethereum blockchain contains a list of transactions that represent valid changes between states. And that's because Ethereum is a transaction-based state machine that is responsible for constantly changing the world globally accessible state, meaning all of the accounts that exist on Ethereum and how much money that they own at any point in time and who owns what at any given point in time. That's what I mean by world state. And every single time a transaction gets submitted to Ethereum for processing, what happens is the world state or the overall state of the blockchain is changed from the previous state to the new state. So the Ethereum protocol itself exists solely for the purpose of keeping a continuous, uninterrupted, and immutable operation of this state machine. And all of the state changes get packaged into blocks because a block is really a package of transactions. And from the perspective of the world state, you can see Ethereum as a sort of state chain. But from the viewpoint of an implementation, Ethereum can also be seen as a chain of blocks. So that's why we call it a blockchain. And the brain of what's constantly processing these changes of state is this virtual machine called the EVM. It's what's applying changes to this globally shared world state and the EVM uses a stack based processor. It's got a lot of similar parts to a real computer such as a stack based processor, a volatile memory location, a permanent storage location that stores the entire state of Ethereum. And the EVM also has auxiliary data locations like call data which is a special location inside of the EVM that you're gonna learn about as a Solidity developer. Now, inside of the EVM, which holds everything on Ethereum, there exists only two types of accounts, externally owned accounts and contract accounts. And externally owned accounts are wallet accounts. And these different types of accounts can talk to each other and they transfer value to each other in a peer-to-peer -peer manner without a middleman, and all of the resulting value transfers and whatnot get documented on a public virtual ledger that no centralized entity owns and controls. And an externally owned account, which is a wallet account, is the only kind of account that can trigger a transaction in order to call a function on a smart contract. 
And that's because an externally owned account holds a private key because it's a wallet. It's the only thing that can control data on a decentralized ledger inside of a blockchain like Ethereum. Now, the contract account, on the other hand, doesn't have a private key. Instead, it holds smart contract code or what we call EVM code. And that's because it's a contract account. So it holds actual code where an EOA account doesn't. But both accounts have four main fields, two of which are only used in the contract account. The first field that both accounts inside of the EVM share is called a nonce. And a nonce is just a counter that indicates the number of transactions sent from an externally owned account or the number of contracts created from a contract account. Both accounts have a balance, which means they register how much value in ETH they hold in the format of way, which is the smallest denomination of ETH. And the contract account also has a valid code hash field that actually does something that holds the hash of where the smart contract code that it contains exists. And it also has a storage hash, which points to its own unique storage location where all of the data and all of the accounts and what the accounts own within a given contract are stored. It's stored within a contract account's storage location that is accessed via this storage hash field. So the Ethereum protocol is a state machine and it has a globally accessible singleton state which contains the entire world state of Ethereum and it also has a virtual machine called the EVM that constantly applies changes to that world state. Now, if you want one of these six-figure blockchain development jobs, you got to learn a very powerful programming language called Solidity. And Solidity is a very powerful language because it's the first time in history that we can actually program with money natively. We've never been able to do this before. So if you want to do a deeper dive into Solidity or you want to get a really good rock-solid introduction to the Solidity programming language, then check out the Solidity Deep Dive by going to www.defidevelopercademy.com. And as a free bonus for a short time, I'm also explaining to other new developers how automated market makers work. It's a technology that's used to implement decentralized exchanges on blockchains like Ethereum. And it's an example of a perfect use case of when to use a blockchain. So definitely check out the Solidity Deep Dive. It's going to walk you through everything that you need to know in order to really grok the Solidity programming language. And in the next lesson and episode of this series, we're going to talk about transactions because transactions are at the heart of the Ethereum blockchain or any blockchain for that matter. So this is your coach, Mark, and I look forward to meeting you in the next lesson.